Hello, hello, good evening. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I was thinking about uh, rock and roll heroes and what they mean. I mean, we love rock and roll heroes because they're cooler than us, they're smarter than us, they're richer than us. And we all love them, right? Wrong. Wrong. I mean, let's put it in perspective. I don't want to name names, but say James Bond, you know? What good is James Bond without Goldfinger? Or Dr. No? Or Pussy Galore? He's just a swab, boring guy in a tux with a nitpicky drink order that uh, <laughs> likes to say his name a lot. In 1969, that was essentially what had happened to rock. All heroes, no villains. And you're thinking, well, what about Jerry Lee Lewis? What about Keith Richards? Badass mother to be sure, but not villains. But then, in 1969, a very special event happened. It was in Venice, California, at the Cheetah Club, where a new band, Alice Cooper, appeared on stage. You say that now, but not in 1969. Because that show is famous for the fact that within five minutes, they cleared the room. Everyone hated him. Except one man who saw the beauty, and that was Frank Zappa. Exactly. Who else? So Frank went up to that band, said, I'm going to sign you to my label. I don't like you. I don't understand your music. You're so freaky, I don't get it. Are you on drugs? Which Alice said, no, not on drugs. The rest is rock history. I mean, they went on at that point to become the most rock star destroying band of all time. They were more like a murderous gang of drag queens, say. In a good way, that's good. But their mission was, as they would say it themselves, was to destroy the hippies' dreams of peace, love, and understanding. And to quote them, all they wanted were Ferraris, switchblades, and blondes. Before Alice Cooper, it was not a rock show. He invented the rock show. I wouldn't be here talking about Alice Cooper if it was just the stage show. In a short period of time, they would just crank out amazing platinum record after amazing platinum record, hit after hit, that became more than hits, they became anthems, teenage anthems. School's out, 18, no more Mr. Nice Guy, under my wheels, on and on and on. But I still remember seeing this picture of Alice Cooper leaning at the bar, and he had a denim jacket that said, remember the coop, embroidered on the back. Well. 40 years later, 50 million records later, yeah, we f remember the coup, all right. People were bored with peace and love. I mean, I always said that we were the band that drove the stake through the heart of the love generation. So if some 14-year-old boy goes home wearing eye makeup saying, hey, Alice Cooper wears it, why can't I wear it? And of course his parents are gonna say, <laughs> My reputation sort of precedes me, you know, as far as killing chickens and biting people's heads off. Have you Colonel been? Sanders kills chickens. I don't know. <laughs> no, Mr. Nice Guy, he said,
the most disgusting, parent terrorizing band of all time, the Alice Cooper Band. Ladies and gentlemen, finally in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Alice Cooper. We just want to thank the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for voting us in. We really have to thank our manager of 42 years, Shep Gordon. We want to recognize the late Glenn Buxton, who was the heart and soul of our band. You know, we were the first generation brought up by the Beatles and the Stones, but the bands that really hit home for us were the Yardbirds, the Who, the Kinks. They gave us our musical education. I hope I never outgrow a Pete Townsend windmill chord. I hope I never outgrow a Jeff Beck lead guitar. Feels like I'm living in the middle of doubt. I wish I could tell you that being in the hall now, that uh, will never embarrass you. But I really can't make that promise. <laughs> I mean, after all, we are Alice Cooper. It's what we do. Lots of things happen over the years. Number one, you trade these in for these. I'd like to thank Dwayne Eddy and the Rebels for playing at a double feature movie and between movies they came out and played and I said, that's what I want to do. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, Alice's parents, Mr. and Mr. Fernier, for pr putting up with us as we rehearsed and sat on their Naga Hyde couch. And also, I'd just like to extend this uh, Find It In Your Heart for our brothers and sisters in Japan who have suffered a tremendous loss, and they'll need all of our help to get back on their feet. And God bless you all, and rock on! Hughes' presentation of the 2011 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony is presented by AT&T. Rethink Possible. First of all, I'd like to thank four of my best friends in the world, Glenn Buxton, Michael Bruce, Vincent Fernier, came Alice, and Dennis Dunaway. These four characters uh, gave a homeless drummer a place to stay in Santa Monica. Two weeks later, they asked me to play drums in their band. Um, and, and also thanks to Bob Ezrin, who became the sixth member of the band. To all the Alice Cooper fans around the planet that have been supportive over the years, well, guess what? 
Ellis Cooper and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame have now collided. And this statue is because of you, it's about you, and it's for you. Thank you a f- billion. Thank you. By the way, it's my 35th anniversary to my wife, Cheryl, over there, who was our skinny little ballerina in Nightmare. And we're still happily married. Thank you, babe.